dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 days of prayer. Today we are on day 15 and we thank the Lord for his grace this far and we can't wait to see how the end will look like. I'm inviting you this morning one more time. It could, of course, it could be evening, wherever you are, or afternoon. But just feel good and, 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 and appreciate and be part of this uh, moment that we want to be with the Lord. Uh, our message or subject uh, this morning, as you know now, this is our third day when we are looking into the Word of God. The way I said the Word of God service, and, and we are talking about the... The, the, the an attribute of the word of God that the word of God is is life, is is living, it 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 gives life, it's life giving. So the word of God as life giving, you know, agent. So let's pray before we get to the text, which is of course from the book of Second Timothy, uh, chapter three and verse number sixteen. Let's seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the precious moment we have to share and be at your feet this moment. I invite you to speak to us through your word and through this experience, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, as we're looking at another aspect of the word of God, the power which is in the word of God, the miracle of the word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instructions in righteousness. Verse number 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Powerful. So the word of God, that is all the scripture, not some portions of the scripture, not some parts of the scripture, all scripture, the 66 books of of the Bible, all from Genesis to Revelation, all is inspired, given by God. And so this is very, very important. In fact, the term that Paul uses here, that all scripture is given by inspiration, that term inspiration, it has a literal meaning of God breathing the scripture. God breathing the scripture. Not breathing into the scripture, but God breathing the scripture. The scriptures came to be as a result of the breath of God. The breath of God. So God breathed the scripture. And so those who wrote, the authors of the scripture, received the breath of God. The breath of God. And then they wrote what the breath of God came, what the breath of God was, what the breath of God brought, that is what they wrote. So and this is very, very important to know and to appreciate that this particular word of God, when Paul says it is through inspiration, and it talks about, it, 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 it removes any aspects of, of human, human interventions or human ideas or, 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 or human efforts in writing the scripture. And, and entirely centers or settles the scripture uh, with God. It is the breath of God himself. And, and, and so it is an ultimate entrance of God. And so we cannot view it any way Otherwise, we, we would be, I mean, contrary to what we, we, we get from the scripture. Otherwise, we would be uh, being unfair to the very scripture. And so, Paul here says uh, to Timothy that this word of God from Genesis to uh, Revelation is given by the breath of God, by inspiration of God. And so, he says it is good, it is profitable. For doctrine, doctrine is a teaching of the scripture. It is good, it is profitable. For teachings in doctrine, it is profitable. For the proof God, God spoke, God breathed things that matter to us. 
he, he, he used wisdom uh, which we find in the scripture. So when we interact with the scripture, we, we find the wisdom of the word of God as God spoke, as God breathed it out, that the others then would catch it and write. You see, he says it is good for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. I wonder people who live without the word of God, what kind of a life do they lead? I, I, I wonder. <coughs> so, so, sorry of my thought drying up. So I wonder those people who are just living this life without the word of God, how do they live this kind of life? Because it is the word of God, the Bible says here, it instructs the man and of course the woman of God. It instructs us. It, it, it takes us through the path of righteousness and, and, and bring us back whenever we wander away. It has a way of, of bringing us back like a wandering sheep would be brought back the fold by the shepherd. The word of God has a way of, of, of subduing us and, and cultivating us to become a man or a woman of God. And, and so this morning, as we seek the Lord in prayer this afternoon, wherever you are this evening, as you seek the Lord in prayer, my question is, do you accept the word of God, the scripture, as it is, as the rule of faith, the constitution of our life, the code of regulation and the instruction that we have been given by God for instructions? I want to read one text or one passage from uh, my favorite author, Gospel Workers by LNG Word, page 250, just very few sentences here, uh, then we pray. She says this, the life of God, which gives life to the world, is in his word. It was by his word that Jesus healed diseases and cast out demons. By his word, he stilled the sea and raised the dead. And the people bore witness that his word was with power. He spoke the word of God as he had spoken it to all the Old Testament writers. The old Bible is a manifestation of Christ. It is our only source of power. And so this moment of prayer, the word of God is important for you. The word of God is important for us. Because it is in this word that we interact with the very breath of God. The very wishes of God for your life. The very intentions of God for your life. The very promises of God for your life. In this word, we find hope. We find encouragement. We find strength. Even when our friends have run away from us. Even when we are under persecutions. Even when we are betrayed by the very ones that we valued, this word of God becomes our solace, our help, and our hope. I pray this moment before we get to the moment of prayer that you will find desire to study the word of God. Not to study like a piece of literature, but to study its means of interacting with the breath of God for the word of God is life. It impacts life. And it can give you back your life. Those struggles you see, the disappointments you see, the challenges you see, the uncertainties of this life. I can tell you for sure the word of God has, is able to bring you back to the purposes of God and give you victory in every single challenge of your life. So won't you join me in prayer as we seek the Lord to intervene and to come to the solutions of our life. I want to mention a few prayer requests here, then we pray. We join me, pray for strength to have faith in God's promises and not to be dragged down by our feelings of doubt or fear. Number two, we pray the promises of God's word over the seven people that you are praying for. You have the member, the seven member list that you're praying for. Now pray that the promise of God's word may come to be true 
in their lives. Pray that Jesus' love and the truth of his word will find entrance into those countries where there is no Adventist presence. We also pray for believers that are experiencing great religious persecution, especially in Russia, China, and the Middle East countries. We pray for those who have chosen to be baptized since the conflict started in East Europe. Pray those decisions will be permanent in their lives. And in your own unique situation, pray for the needs you have wherever you are. Pray for the needs of the seven people you are praying for. Pray for anything that can come into your mind. Pray that the Lord's power may rest upon us, especially through his word. And that through this word of God, many will be transformed and prepared for the second coming. Let's take a moment and talk to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you. It's a precious moment when we are before you and we thank you, Lord, for this moment. We thank you for the opportunity. Not many people who have this privilege, but we have. We want to thank you so much. Lord, we begin by confessing our ways that are not right before you. You are a God who forgives and cleanses from all manner of righteousness. And so our responsibility and duty is just to confess. And Lord, we approach you, the throne of grace, this moment, confessing our sins and our weakness. Lord, may you cleanse us and may you wash us clean and may you accept us even in this fellowship. I thank you for my dear viewer. Lord, may you meet them at their very point of need. May you meet their struggle at their very point of need. May you vindicate their case. May you fight their battles. May you give them victory and success because they have chosen to trust in you. Lord, we want to thank you for the prayer requests that we have lifted here. You know each one of them in details that we have just read them here. You also know all the prayer requests that my dear viewer is raising and lifting before you. Lord, we pray that you will come into these prayers and answer us because you have said, Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. And knock, the door shall be opened. And indeed, I know even this moment of prayer, there are many, a million needs that are here. And Lord, we are presenting all those who are sick this moment before you for healing in Jesus' name. We are presenting those who are struggling with, with the demonic powers. That Lord, they can be set free from the captive of the evil one in Jesus' name. We are praying for those who are struggling in the marriages, Lord, that you may bring healing in our families. We so pray in Jesus' name. We are praying for those who are looking for opportunities, jobs, Lord. Many people are struggling. Economic times are so difficult. Lord, we are praying for breakthroughs. We are praying for miracles in our economic situations. And we know that indeed you are faithful. We pray in Jesus' name that indeed you shall answer these prayers. We pray for those who are afflicted in various ways. And we pray for those who are struggling in, with habits. And the spiritual work is dwindling, my Father that you shall come and fight for them and give them victory. This and many more that your people continue praying and presenting before you and for the seven people we are praying for, Lord. I pray that this moment will be a turning point in somebody's life, in some corner where, wherever they'll be watching and listening to this message from. Somebody may say, I was giving up, but Lord, you spoke to me. And now we will continue living. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, dear viewer, wherever you are. As usual, I'll just remind you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do just click that button and, and be part of this ministry. That any time we are doing these videos, we will be being able to be notified. But also, more importantly, I also invite you kindly to share. Just click that button, share with your friends as many as you can. You never know who needed this message. So please, share as much as you can. Till tomorrow, Lord be with you.